welcome to another episode of Our Athletes. My name is Michael Brazil, and I'm the host of the show where I get to interview and have conversations with Olympic athletes, hopefuls, and legends on their story and path to the games. Today, we have the incredible Kelly Clay's USA Volleyball 2020 Olympic hopeful. Kelly is really, really interesting to speak with. She's not only one of the best volleyball players on planet Earth, with an incredible shot at not only making the Olympics, but absolutely making a medal, if not making it gold. But she is also a self-proclaimed Comic-Con conqueror, video game lover, and Dungeons and Dragons Dungeons and Dragons addict. Um, so we had a really awesome conversation, obviously, about her growing up, going to school, doing all those things, playing volleyball for a long time, and winning three straight national championships at USC. And then we also have a really nice conversation about which video game she's playing and her Dungeons and Dragons character. So it was very interesting, a lot of fun. Really glad I had the opportunity to talk with Kelly. Um, and she will be, as she says in the video or in the podcast, she will be um, on the road coming up soon in Chicago and then in Rome. So wish her some good luck. So thank you so much to Kelly. And without further ado, here's the interview. All right, today, special guest, Kelly Clay's USA Volleyball 2020 Olympic hopeful, born September 18th, 1995 in Fullerton, California, started playing volleyball indoors at age 11 and switched to beach around the jun around junior year of her high school class. I don't know, kind of messed that up, but whatever, we'll roll with it. Uh, yeah. member, of, <laughs> member of the 2012 US Women Junior National Training Team, graduated high school early to attend USC, where she was a three-time national champion and was the 2016-2017 Pac-12 Player of the Year. She joined Team USA in 2011 on their beach volleyball high performance team. She won the AVP Gold Series Championships, where her and her partner Sarah Hughes became the youngest team to ever win an AVP event. She defeated the 2016 Olympic gold medalist before the Olympics and once after the Olympics. And she is a self-proclaimed Comic-Con conqueror, video game lover, D&D addict, and anime enthusiast. Kelly, thank you for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. You're the one that's going to the Olympics. I'm just the guy asking the questions. So the pleasure, <laughs> I promise you, is all mine. Kelly, um, let's just jump right into it. The only thing I know about Fullerton, California is uh, Cal State Fullerton. So I, I apologize. That way you can kind of tell us a little bit more about it. So tell us, I guess, what it was like growing up in California and obviously the two sides of you mixing, you know, sports and video games because that was one thing my parents had a lot of difficulty getting me outside. At one point, I took my controller and put it outside and then played through the window. So I don't know if you ever got that far, but tell us a little about growing up in California. No, I loved every little bit of it. I love that it's almost year-round sunny. I love summer weather. Um, I it's it's funny that I how often I hang out at the beach now. And I live in California. I did not grow up on the beach. My family would go camping in San Clemente or Santa Cruz, you know, once a year during the summer. But other than that, I didn't hang out at the beach all that much. Um, which is super weird for me to you know think back on. But um, just a little I ironic. Grew up I know, it's pretty funny. Um, I grew up uh, a gym rat and um, loved playing. I played basketball and softball and ran a little track growing up. And then when I was 11, um, started playing volleyball and then even more time in the gym and loved every little bit of it. But yeah, I'd, I'd come home and I have two amazing siblings and we would, you know, jump back and forth from playing video games or playing some imaginary game together outside. So I think we balanced it pretty well. Of of inside video game time and outside. Um, and yeah, I just, I haven't lost either of those interests and people think that's weird and interesting. So here I am just, you know, gaming and playing at the beach and living life. Yeah. I love that. It, it sounds like the perfect, it sounds like you hit the jackpot. <laughs> Let's just say that it absolutely sounds like you hit the jackpot. So you kind yeah. of uh, skirted over it a little bit, but um, before we recorded, you told me a pretty cute story of actually how you got into volleyball. So if you don't mind, regurgitating some of that for the audience. I'm sure they'll like it just as much as I did the first time. Yes, of course. Yeah. So I, uh, as I said, grew up playing basketball, softball, running a little track. And um, how I got into indoor volleyball was my high school coach was going around to some junior highs kind of looking for um, young athletes for his club. Um, and he walked into my gym and looked around for the tallest human standing um, in the crowd, which was my father, he is six, seven and his shoulders are double mine. And yeah, he's just a big, big bear of a man. He's, he's a teddy bear, but he can, 
he can get vicious sometimes, but you know, just, just when he needs to. But uh, my, my high school coach walked up to him and, and introduced himself and asked which one was, you know, was his kid. And my dad points out and says, oh, you know, the skinny ginger out there, which I was the tallest one out there. And he invited us to, you know, come to a clinic. And I, I went and I immediately fell in love. It was amazing. I had no idea what I was doing, but I just, I knew in my heart, this is where I was meant to be. And the rest is history. <laughs> I, so the thing is, so my friends and I were a little different than most rather than playing pickup basketball. We actually just play pickup volleyball all the time. Uh, it's just it. a constant. Now I can't say we quite follow the rules to a T. Maybe there's a few oh, carries either. here and there, but <laughs> we all have a really good time. We keep, keeps us super active and we all just have a blast. Yeah. We're also hyper competitive when it comes to it. So um, volleyball is one of my favorite recreational sports. So I can only imagine what it's like getting to play it um, every day and, and, you know, get to enjoy it, love it. And Hey, getting paid for something you love to do is not that bad. Right. So I think that that I'm is, not yeah, congratulations on that. You deserve it. Um, so you, as you said, you started with indoor volleyball around 11. And then as I said in the, in the intro a little bit, you did switch to beach around the junior, around junior year of high school. Um, right. tell us a little bit, cause again, you told me that off camera as well. Tell us a little bit about how that kind of came about and, and, you know, some of the circumstances yeah. that were involved in that. Yeah. So I, um, uh, my heart told me to play indoor and that's, you know, that's all I knew and that's what I loved. And so quick question. My, did you ever, did you ever play beach before? Like other than like pickup, did you ever try it or, or even in pickup? Did you ever try it kind of before? No, I never did like pickup or anything. So this is, so the first time you played it was like a legit first time, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. The, so I'll, I'll backtrack just a little. So my, Sorry. um, coaches at, no, you're good. Uh, my coaches at, um, Long Beach state. Cause at the time, so it was like my sophomore, junior year, right in there. Um, I was verbally committed to Long Beach State. That's why I was listening to them tell me what to do. Uh, they suggested to go try out beach because by the time I would get to college, beach volleyball was going to be, be a sport. And uh, in our off season, all the athletes were going to play. And I was like, eh, kind of hesitant about it. I don't really know if I want to do this. And uh, they... Um, work with this guy is his he passed away a few years ago his name was Bill Lovelace and he kind of showed me the ropes of what beach was he was such an amazing guy everybody in uh, Huntington knew him as pajama bill he was absolutely amazing so I did a few training sessions with him and then um, I think a month later or so USA was having um, a tryout for their high performance team and my coaches again suggested that I go try that out so Went out there, I was the weirdo open hand tipping and everybody's yelling at me about, you know, what are you doing? That's, that's against the rules. And I literally had no idea what I was doing and nobody was saying like, you can't open hand tip out here. And I was just trying to monkey see monkey do, kind of figure out the ropes and uh, somehow made the under 19 uh, team and then worked my way up to one of the travel spots. Uh, I got to go to uh, Porto, Portugal for uh, the under 19 world championships and had such an amazing time. It was the first time I had left the country, first time really playing in a big beach volleyball competition. Um, I'd played in a few CBBAs um, before we had left for this. And yeah, we, we came home with a third and that's when the USC uh, staff um, offered um, a full ride to go play beach instead of indoor. So I had to sit down with, me and my uh, parents and um, just prayed a ton uh, about, you know, this huge decision that such a young person had to make, you know, um, the next kind of big step of my future. And I just really tried to listen to the people I trusted um, and again, prayed about it and listened to my gut and it said beach. So uh, went to USC uh, for four years uh, and yeah, had to, pretty amazing did pretty okay there. while you were there not too bad no, not too good. bad yeah, yeah yeah and then uh now i play professionally and not I it could be worse right it could it be could worse be so a, a couple yeah. questions about that so totally. as you said the reason you you tr even started doing beach at all is because cal state or because i apologize uh long beach, long, state. long beach state thank you mm -hmm. said hey this is gonna be here by the time you get here and you're going to do it at least in the off season, was there no opportunity to do both indoor and beach at the same time at Long Beach State or even at USC? No. So at Long Beach, I would have been playing both. Um, okay. 
but I at USC their programs are separate they don't okay. allow athletes to do both you have to be fully committed to one mm-hmm. or the other so that's why again it was a huge de- decision because I had to either you know stay where I was at and you know play both and but my focus would have been on indoor I was on still kind of you know on the fence about you know beach volleyball what is mm-hmm. this um or kind of jump you know head first into this entirely new scene of beach volleyball and you know honestly I picked it because I hate shoes with a fiery passion and I want to <laughs> play a sport where I didn't have to wear shoes so I just hey I just committed and full force there we go it worked out well. You get to walk on sand all the time, so it could be yeah. way, way worse. Um, but now, that is... to, now it's appropriate that I'm not wearing shoes. Yeah, of perfect. People looking at me like I'm crazy. Who's this weirdo? It's like, no, actually, I'm a volleyball player. It's fine. Yeah, um, that's yeah. really funny. I like that. Very cute. But <laughs> it, is, it is very interesting, to you know, especially with the way you still talk about indoor volleyball and understanding that, especially at the time, you were even further in love with it, that you had the opportunity to still do that and try out this new thing. And instead, right. you know, you kind of, you know, ditched your former lover um, for this new flame and obviously it worked out, but it's really interesting just kind of hearing you talk back about it because you still talk very highly of indoor volleyball. Um, So it's very, you know, I'd love to be a, yeah, I would love to have been a fly in the room to actually, you know, just kind of understand that, that uh, decision a little bit more Uh, because it sounds like it would have been a no brainer to say, Hey, I can do both. Um, But instead, I think it's also like the, the school, I think, was another, you know, big factor. It is USC, um, right? Yeah. It is USC. And just the the Trojan family is something that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. And that's another huge reason I'm I'm very, very thankful that I made Absolutely. that decision. Because I'm I still um, hooked up with a lot of people there and who have helped me a lot. And I love giving back to them. And I just, it is a family and it's, it's a really cool um, place to be at. Yeah, I guess I guess USC. It's a you know, being a Trojan is kind of cool, I bet. So the not. Quite honest, though. I love it. I love it. Congratulations on that. And yeah, as as we said, I mean, you you won three national championships there. You player Pac-12 Player of the Year um, in sixteen slash seventeen. So that is absolutely fantastic. And congratulations. So one thing I want to do is actually take a pause from your story a little bit. And you know, now that we are kind of in the in the midst of talking about indoor versus beach, I, as you said, you already brought up some rules that are not you can't do in beach that you can do in indoor or is not only accepted, but encouraged indoor. Can you give us a little bit more? Cause when the Olympics are around, I watch all the sports and I watch both volleyballs and I love it all. Um, Can you tell us a little bit more about maybe some of the discrepancies? Obviously we know there's only two people in beach and there's what six or however many seven and, and indoor six. Okay. So I was right the first time. Um, But yeah, could you, could you tell us a little bit more about, I guess some of the things that really the difference is when a normal person, you know, will say me watches, it's just like, oh, it's volleyball versus you being like, no, these are all the differences that you can now pay attention to. Okay, here we go. Indoor, you're on a wood floor. Beach, you're on the beach. Got it. Or they've done. done nope, other we're places. done. That's it. That's all Easy. I needed. We're good. We're good. Okay, perfect. Now, you know, if you're inside somewhere or you're, <laughs> if there's sand on the floor, is there wood on the floor? Biggest biggest difference all right number of people obviously what you just said is another big difference um indoor you're allowed to um attack the ball um with an open hand and redirect the ball beach you are not you have to so we call it a pokey you have to kind of curl your fingers and um, so, um i do people get to see you because that was no no it's just you it's just you oh my gosh that don't was worry um yeah and just kind of attack it with your knuckles which we call a pokey um, the setting, uh, overhand setting rules for beach are, uh, different than indoor. You'll see a lot more deep dishing beach versus indoor is very high up. Hands are kind of over your head versus, so I set indoor and I mm-hmm. hand set beach. So it's really funny to look back at pictures and kind of compare setting styles because it's very, very different. Um, the ball beach is a little bit bigger, you know, there's a lot and a lot of different factors out on the beach with you know, wind and, you know, other climates that are going to hit you. I've, I've played in snow before, you know, that you see everything out there. Um, so yeah, you'll see a little more deep dishing and, um, refs, you know, call doubles lifts, you know, a lot more on the beach. So you don't see a ton of athletes, um, hand setting, but, um, a handful of us do. Mm -hmm. Um, what else? That's pretty solid. 
Yeah, I think that's good. That's, that's I can, big ones. Yeah, yeah, and that's really what we're looking for. I'm sure, again, we could go on for hours and hours about the intricacies of both, considering you played both. So many little of, things. Yeah, exactly. But, um, no, that's awesome, and that's really what I was looking for. I think that that's fantastic. Awesome. Um, and then, actually, now we're going to you know, Tarantino this and actually go back in time a little bit. So when you were making okay. the decision to go indoor versus beach um, – was any of that a more long-term view? Because, I mean, the Olympics are for both, right? But the professional indoor scene is obviously nothing compared, at least here in the United States, unless I just totally missed something, compared to the, the beach scene. I mean, with the AVP and everything, you know, I'm, again, I live outside New York City, so the Manhattan um, tournament I hear about, I see about, it looks incredible, and I right. wish I could go every year. Um, so, like, was that ever in the cards at all? Like, were you thinking that far ahead, or was it – like a sincere just kind of in the moment decision talking about the next four years of school um I think a little bit of both um so with beach um I don't think there's as much money as indoor indoor you can go play you can go get a contract internationally not not in the states internationally Mm -hmm. and make a lot of money um which there are a handful of beach players in the off season they'll they'll go do that um I don't think this last year but um, Sarah Pavin, Canadian, um, amazing athlete. She, I think for the past, oh gosh, I'll probably get this wrong. Four or five years played nonstop beach season, indoor season, beach season, indoor season. Um, because those con, if you get a good contract indoor, you're going to mm-hmm. make a lot of money. Awesome. Um, so just, it just kind of depends. I think I just kind of, um, listen to my heart and what, I felt like I was going to enjoy in the long run as Mm -hmm. well as um, I had a lot of injuries with indoor. Uh, I fractured my back. I dislocated an ankle. I rolled my ankles multiple times. Um, My shoulder was pretty banged up. Just, I mean, it's a lot of, it's a lot of impact and the sand is very forgiving. I could dive face first in it and I'm going to be fine. So um, I think that was a factor as well. I, yeah, I think there were, a lot of different things but those were kind of the biggest ones makes sense makes sense very cool yeah. um and that's good to know thank you for all that information um no so we talked a little bit about dominating at usc tell us about so you also you also talked about 2011 when you joined the um the beach volleyball high performance team in 2012 the u.s women junior national training team tell us a little bit about what that experience was like um again now being two years on team usa and really kind of the uh, legitimacy, I guess, of kind of seeing yourself, okay, I was here last year, I'm here again this year, and then kind of being able to see yourself moving forward on Team USA. Oh, it was so much fun. Uh, the It's it's always fun to kind of, I think when I was playing, you know, beach kind of in the summer, you know, those two summers, and then jumping back to indoor, it was, it was so nice to come back and, you know, have a big team again, because I think that's one thing I kind of miss. Um, is having, you know, five, you know, athletes on the court with me um, and kind of the camaraderie of a big team, which is another reason I loved college beach because we had so many, it's such a huge team and everybody's cheering for each other and everybody's kind of like right on your court, which was so, 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 so fun. Um, but uh, I had such a great time, but I kind of towards the end of our, our training, I um, hurt my back. Um, and I, I was getting a lot of like very intense shooting pain down my left leg. And I, uh, went and get off, went and got an MRI and I found out I had fractured my L5. Um, so that was, I think another big, um, reason and decision for me to kind of, that I, I need to change something. Um, so, so beach, I mean, I've, I have yet, knock on wood, I've yet to have any back problems playing, you know, out on the sand, but um, I loved playing with the indoor team. It was, it was a lot of fun. Those girls, I'm still friends with a handful of them. They're amazing. And yeah, I just, I think it was a really um, meaningful experience for me. And yeah, I could talk praises all day probably <laughs> well you talked a lot so i'm sure anyone who listens will understand and appreciate as well um just just the opportunity that you've had um and some more of the opportunities that are going to come which are pretty cool so uh yeah as we said at usc three-time national champ uh which one was the sweetest oh gosh first um, one's pretty really? cool but the last one's also pretty cool i'm sure right i think they were all amazing and unique in their own way the first one was obviously amazing because it was 
the first. Mm. Um, and there's never going to be another first. It's always going to be us and that team, um, which was really exciting. I think my junior year was really special because um, my freshman class, there's there was five or six of us who or five of us that like stayed from freshman to senior year that really, I think, changed the team culture on that team. And that year I, I saw it, I think the most, just the, the culture that we, that we had wanted everybody a hundred percent cheering and fighting for everyone else. It wasn't each individual on the court trying to, you know, someone playing on the threes trying to, Oh, I need to play good so I can play on the twos. There was no, there was no ego. Like we were on the ones, but we were fighting for our five teams. We were fighting for our fours. Um, and I think that was, that made that year really special for me. And then senior year finishing it off made it special yeah. because of that. So Not- it was, it was amazing. Each, each year, I think I had a different and unique and incredible experience. Like freshman year, we didn't win anything, but um, Misty May was our volunteer assistant coach and I got to work with her, which made that year mm-hmm. unreal. Yeah. So I think, I just think every year, you know, something new and interesting happened as well as, you know, new and interesting challenges that I had to overcome. But, you know, you learn from those experiences and you learn from, I mean, you learn from everything. And I just, I had a, an interesting and great and, you know, ups and downs of, of a college, of a college career. Yeah. So you won sophomore, junior, and senior year. So you won three in a row. Yeah. And sophomore year, it was still ABCA and we won the pairs. So I guess we won. I won four. I have four big, pretty rings. Right okay. Now. That's cool. You can count how many you wanted. Love it. I'm going to count it as four. I'll change that in okay, the show perfect. notes. Don't worry. I like that okay, a perfect. lot. Um, congratulations. That is absolutely fantastic. And Thank then you. obviously yeah, three in a row. Player of the year, too. That's also a huge, huge honor. Pac-12, I'm assuming. So exciting, yeah. Yeah, I'm assuming Pac-12, considering most of California is, you know, in the Pac-12 in some way, shape, or form. Um, Uh You know, you were going up against some pretty stiff competition when it came to something like that. So it's a huge, huge honor. So congratulations. Uh, What did it it mean? Yeah. I mean, it was the first year they had given out the award. Um, Oh, no way. So it was really exciting to to get it. Yeah, I, I didn't really know that. Um, it was a thing and gosh, if someone looks back and sees that they've given out the award before, then I just wasn't paying attention and that's on me, but it's cool. Um, I wasn't really paying attention to any types of awards or honors or anything like that. And they announced it and it was just, it was just, it was nice to have that type of recognition. Um, and yeah, my parents were super stoked about it and really proud of me, but I just, I don't really, it, it doesn't hold a whole lot of meaning to me. I, I care more about, you know, those team championships that we all did together because it's a hundred percent a team effort. If I was out there by myself, nothing would have happened. We, mm-hmm. you know, the USC would have gone anywhere like beach volleyball because it's five separate teams. Um, you, you have to have depth and our, you know, your fives have to play well, your four, like everybody does. So it's, I just, I think it's a hundred percent a team effort and I'm, I'm grateful to have gotten those awards and it was awesome and exciting in the moment, but the, those two things aren't something that I, um, you know, think about back Mm -hmm. as the most fond memories. Um, it's more those championships, um, with my entire team and, you know, being on the sideline watching and cheering and screaming and just you know, living in it. And those are the, those are the things I, I remember from. Absolutely. And that's, that's, that makes sense. That's that's why you play right to win the the game. You don't play to win best player on the court. Like that's nice, but it doesn't do much. Um, they also, I assume I've never been in this position, so I apologize if I'm (laughs) overstepping my boundaries here. Um, but I'm assuming when you win those individual awards and also win a national championship at the same time, you can kind of, enjoy the individual award a little bit more because it's not like oh I did great but we didn't win it's oh I did great oh and we won so I feel like again yeah, never been like, there but it was like sprinkles on top of you know, exactly it's perfect uh, a little cherry some sprinkles yeah. maybe some uh, some some uh, some fudge or something that sounds delicious yeah, exactly. I love it, it I love it those goodies on top that I love well congratulations <laughs> <laughs> I love it well congratulations sounds like USC was a lot of fun um sounds like you made the right decision 
all in all. Um, and then after you left USC, you became a professional volleyball player. Um, well, I guess like it probably wasn't a very difficult decision, but was there any like, Oh, maybe I won't do this. I'll go do something else. Or was it always kind of, at what point did you realize like, Oh, this is going to be my career for the foreseeable future. Yeah. 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 We, um, I'd been playing in the summers, um, on the FIVB. We, Freshman and sophomore year of college, we started playing in North Seca's, which are smaller level tournaments to get okay. points. Because you to get into FIVB events, you have to have points. So freshman and sophomore years during the summers when we had free time, we played in a few North Seca's and thankfully got a few wild cards into some events. So by the time, um, even junior year, we were playing in big events. And then by the time we graduated senior year, we were... I already felt we were already main draw players. We didn't have to, you know, fight through country quota, fight through qualifier. We were already there, which was really exciting. And I'm really thankful for, you know, our coaches for kind of, you know, having that hindsight and, you know, seeing our potential and, and helping us kind of figure that out. Cause I know, I know how challenged I've seen. I have friends who have graduated and they're like, Oh my gosh, how do I do this? And they didn't have the same, um, guidance that we did and I'm so thankful for that and I try to help them as much as I can and just you know do whatever a little bit that I can to help mm-hmm. and uh yeah I'm just yeah really really thankful because yeah it was it was a no-brainer because we were we were already there and it was really exciting we could we saw the potential and we just ran with it yeah and then once you stop being an amateur, you were allowed to start making money doing it too. So that's also yeah. kind of nice. Not that bad. Well, okay. It was. Oh, all right. It was, it was pretty fun. Okay, yeah, yeah. We'll dive in. Um, it's so, recording, but I can edit anything out if necessary. I just want to let you know. Okay. I'm perfect. kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so the funny thing was when we graduated. Um, when we, I guess I'll backtrack. When we were at USC playing in these events, not able to take money, which sucked, but we were allowed to take um, expenses. So we went on shopping sprees. Awesome. And then turned in the, um, those receipts and we were you know, reimbursed. So we had two summers of just you know, dining at the like, nicest places and eating like oysters and you know, having awesome. a freaking great time. And then we graduated it's professional. This is our job now. Super exciting. And now I have to save all my money. Like, yeah. Mm. Like this is so exciting. We get to take all the money, but darn it. No more shopping sprees. <laughs> oh, that is, I like the way you did that. That is pretty funny actually. Um, right? yeah, it's so an like, expense. You need clothes, right? Like what do you, like yeah. what do you want? You need to no, eat. We, we went on Lululemon. Oh, there you go. Sprees. Um, like bought so much Adidas gear, like just went, well deserved. We got like so many pairs of Oakleys, like because we could. Yeah, well deserved too. You uh, you worked very hard and you deserve all of it, and I love it. Um, but congratulations, that is too funny. So funny. Oh, I like that story. Yeah, I'll let I'll let um you guys will get her listen through. So if this this makes the cut, I'm happy. If not, hey, it is what it is. Um, <laughs> then we but, enjoyed it at least. Yes, absolutely, and I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, all right, cool. So during your professional career, um. The first event, if I'm not mistaken, that you went to as a professional, you won the AV, you won the, what was it? The, I apologize. Um, I'm missing it here. The AVP Gold Series Championship. Was that your first professional event or are you still amateurs at that time? Our first event when we turned So won the AVP Gold Series Championship where you guys were the youngest oh, ever? the very end of the year. Oh, okay. so we we had graduated. What was it in May? The week after uh, USA Volleyball, after the national championships every year, they host a pairs tournament because mm-hmm. the NCAA doesn't do a pairs tournament anymore. So it's cool that USA kind of runs their own mm-hmm. uh, pairs tournament. So we had the national championships, we had the pairs tournament, and literally the Sunday after we had won that, we got on a flight to Rio, and we played in Brazil the next weekend, and we like started our whole season kind of exactly what Sarah Spons and my current partner um mm-hmm. it just did so she just graduated she didn't even get to celebrate with her team I'm so sorry she got to celebrate when she got home but awesome she got on a plane and we we started this this journey together that so is awesome it was crazy but the the event that you're talking about was our last event of that whole season oh okay 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 the championships mm-hmm. um in Chicago and you and your partner Sarah Hughes at the time if I'm not Hughes, mistaken yeah. you were the 
youngest team to ever win an AVP event. That's exactly. pretty darn cool. It's so exciting. Yeah, no, that was such a fun tournament. And we just, we tried to take it one match at a time. And all of a sudden we were in the finals. It honestly felt like a whirlwind. And there we were. And like, I don't want to say I blacked out when we were celebrating, but it was just like, it was such a surreal moment and time kind of stopped. And I just like, the crowd was on their feet and it was like so loud that time kind of felt like it stopped, which um, had happened. Um, I think almost for every national championship as well. So, you know, those types of moments, it's really fun when time kind of just slows down so I can like really enjoy it and take it in. I I could see that happening for those types of events. Again, never quite been there, but I can live vicariously through you and hopefully some of the audience members can as well. Um, And you said there's actually a little cute story about the two of you um, winning that event and a gentleman on the men's side who won, if you want to share that as well. No, it was super cool. I think the funniest thing that um, happened at that event was um, my partner and I, our ages, I think equaled like 44, maybe 45. And John Hyden, who had won on the men's side, was either 45 or 46. Anyways, his age is older than our combined age, which major props to him. Yeah, that's true. He's a and a stud. Um, But it was just so funny. Well, we were talking about it after, after the win. We're just like darn like you're old guy (laughs) of course giving him crap and he's such a good sport about it and he's just calling us young bucks and whatever else he said yeah right we had a good time with him that's too funny i mean you're giving him crap you're giving him credit if he's still rocking at 45 or whatever that's incredible so that's that's just fun for both sides i mean that is that is too funny so i'm glad thank you for sharing that again that was Yeah, yeah, yeah that was pretty cute um and then also in 2016 you defeated the eventual gold medal winning um champions at the the eventual olympic gold medal winning champions and then it, mm-hmm. you beat them again in 2017 so after the games I think so. ha- well that's what the internet said so we'll just roll with it okay, um what how angry were you that you didn't get to go to the olympics to beat them there oh so frustrated but we we had long talks about it that we we both wanted our degrees and if we really wanted to make an olympic run we would have had to quit mm-hmm. college because there weren't enough events you know over the summer like mm-hmm. we would have missed too much school. yeah 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 and we both really wanted our degrees um because i know for me i wouldn't have if i had stopped i i think yeah. it would have been so hard to go mm-hmm. back so i'm really glad that i uh you know finished off that and i have that degree now and i'm so you know so proud of myself for you know finishing it but yeah it was it was for sure frustrating that you know you could I could see our potential like right there on the table uh what we were capable of and I just I felt like we like like earned our spot by doing that but uh that's not how you qualify so it didn't happen uh but it was fun to watch and just kind of you know fueled us even more um for more games ahead Mm mm-hmm Oh yeah, we'll we'll get you for the next few. So I'm not I'm not worried about them. But uh, I mean, congratulations on that. I remember in 2016 watching. If I'm not mistaken, that was the Brazil team. Um, so it's kind of cool that I guess they get to they won in front of their home crowd, and you didn't have to beat them there. I guess so. You know, got lucky for them. Let's go with that. Uh, okay. But no, I mean, I just think that it's so cool um, that you were able, you and your partner were able to do that twice. That's just that is just absolutely incredible. Um, so talking about partners, I actually have a, a question about that. So I was looking at your statistics and obviously you've had different partners over the years. Um, mm-hmm. And as you said, your current partner also named Sarah, if I'm not mistaken. So I see a theme here, Sponsor, yeah. but um, I see a theme too. what, um, so tell me, I guess what goes into either choosing a partner, getting, being a partner, having a partner chosen for you or, or switching over time. Like how, how do those conversations go and, and understanding that, you know, we're not leaving each other, but we're leaving. Like, how, how exactly does that work? And, and what do those conversations sound like? I think each one is unique um, to the individual. Um, I've heard lots of conversations with other people about how they've split, some mutual, some not. Um, each one of mine has been different. And, yeah, I think I think out there on the court and just how our lives kind of run out um on tour it's it's a relationship out there it's it's hubby wife or you know it's it's marriage Mm -hmm. and it's so much time together and i just think having that 
that chemistry is one of like the biggest pieces um, of having a successful team. And I've had chemistry with each of my partners in a different way, which has been very unique um, and um, interesting for me to see that how I mesh with different people. Um, but yeah, I think, I think each one um, was kind of different and I learned, you know, so many different things from each person, which was um, good for me in the long run. Like my second partner um, playing professionally, Brittany Hochevar, a vet, um, so much fun to play with. I learned so much from her because uh, she's been playing for, oh my gosh, so many years. Sorry, Britt. I know you're, you're older, but you're such a stud. Um, <laughs> she, she taught me so much on and off the court and we had such an amazing time together. Uh, and then now um with Sarah Sponsel, um I'm I'm the older player and I'm trying to instill things on her while I'm still learning. So like it's a new type of balance that I uh, I haven't really had before. So I just I think each one has been different and again new, unique to um the given situation. And I've just tried to take each experience and learn as much as I can and um do as well as I can with with who kind of God puts in my life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that. And so I guess, how are partners chosen again? So you, you know, you played athletes, with athletes. We, is it? Okay, cool. All the athletes do their own thing. Like someone could call someone up and say, Hey, I want to play with you. And that person can decide to stay with their current partner or dump them and go with them. It's, it's athlete to athlete. It's um, our sport is so athlete driven. And it's so unique to our sport, which I think is really cool. Um, but I think, I mean, there's, there's um, pluses and minuses to of course, know, having yeah. mm -hmm. an athlete driven sport. But uh, I love that I get to go out and find my own coach. I get to go out and find my own strength and conditioning. I get to find my own nutritionist. USA is awesome and supports some of those things, but I have the option of going out and making a plan that I feel is right for me. And that's what I've, you know, gone out and done. And I think it's really cool, which is another thing that's very different to indoor. Indoor, USA Volleyball hires a coach, and the coach makes the team and mm -hmm. decides who plays and decides who sets and decides who travels, all of those things, whereas we do all of those things ourselves. So another big difference between yes. you can cut it or whatever. No, no, that's no, way easier to just leave it in. <laughs> it, it makes sense with the context, too. I like that. Totally, um, totally. So that's that's really interesting. I was I was not aware that it is, a, like, I guess I'm not going to say 100%, but as much as athlete-driven as it is. Um, it is and then crazy. I guess a question on that, understanding, you know, FIVB and, and AVP is where you make money, but the Olympics mm -hmm. is kind of where in the, I don't want to, like, downplay either of those two federations or bodies but the olympics is the olympics right you never the Olymp uh, however many yeah. billions of people watch it so do you do you pick an athlete from your country specifically so that way the chemistry and the teamwork and everything is there f potentially for the olympics or is for me, that yeah i guess for you personally yeah yeah, yeah. I, again um uh it's it's athlete to athlete there are uh, there's like five top teams right now that have a great or four that have a great shot of you know making it to the olympics and i know all of those athletes made their decision um with the goals and the hopes and the dreams of making the olympics mm -hmm. um you know tearing down athletes um aspirations more towards you know doing well in the avp they they have different you know goals and mm -hmm. dreams in that um regard so I just, again, I think it's, it's unique to the, to the athlete in question. But for me, yeah, I, I went out searching for someone that I believed I would win an Olympic gold medal with. And mm -hmm. I believe I found that person. My fingers are crossed because nobody can see me. Only you can. So believe me, I'm on me your too, side. Minor, minor, minor too. Perfect. Um, how did you find uh, Sarah? Like what's oh, that, um, what's that process like, like out of curiosity and like, you don't have to go too oh, deep yeah, and go I, as shallow as you'd like. I'm just kind of curious. Like, like, are you just scouring like tape? Like, are you calling a bunch of people? Like, like, what does that like yeah, look yeah, like? It's, like, how does it work? It's a mix of, you know, lots of phone calls. Um, I trained with a lot of different, um, people to kind of feel out chemistry. So I set up, I had like two weeks where I was training with a different person almost every day and just trying to feel out the chemistry and not force anything and 
um, just find what I, just trying to listen to my gut and find what's going to be best for me. And um, Sarah was on my list of athletes to reach out to and talk to. Um, I had seen she had been, you know, playing well with Lauren Fendrick and she was younger, um, close to my age. And I asked her to train a little and I absolutely loved it. We had lunch after and had a really long talk and I wanted to know what her goals were, what her aspirations were, what her, you know, ideas after college were going to be. I also had to take into account that she still had, you know, half a season of college left. So I had to deal with, you know, we were going to miss a handful of tournaments um, because of her college season. We weren't going to be able to train together as much, which was going to be a challenge. So I had um, my notebook that I write everything in. Um, I have pages and pages on like, you know, different athletes I was thinking of, um, what I had heard from other people about them, what I had seen, just, you know, a collection of my thoughts. And it came down to a few people and then it came down to Sarah. I love it. I love it. It's just cool to kind of peek behind the curtain again. Like I turn on the Olympics and all the athletes I'm rooting for are right there. Um, I don't really know how they got there. I don't really know who they are. And that's exactly why I started doing this because I think it's super interesting because again, if that random guy didn't walk into your 11 year old basketball game and talk to your dad, who's just a gigantic human being, you wouldn't be here right now, which for better or for worse, I don't know. I don't know. Exactly. Maybe you never know. You never know. Mm -hmm. Crazier things have happened, but I just think it's really cool. And again, I really appreciate you taking a couple minutes to, uh, to hang out. So, um, 2020 around the corner, the Olympics, obviously, if I'm not mistaken, there's, it should be pretty cool. Tokyo I hear is a lot of fun. I've never been, but Hey, make enough money. Maybe I get to go there this year. Yes, do it. I had such an amazing time. We had a kind of a test event, um, a few months ago or a month and a half ago, I think. Um, and oh my gosh, it was so surreal being there, just kind of imagining like, oh my gosh, what if, you know, what if we're here uh, next year? Because uh, th- they set up the event the same week we would be playing there next year. So kind of test out climate and different things. And as well as us just enjoying being in Tokyo and competing um, against a lot of the athletes that are probably going to be there next year. Um, I had so much fun seeing all of the geeky fun things that you know Tokyo has to offer there's so much Nintendo like all over the walls which I love there was so much anime everywhere I was I was having the time of my life that is fantastic volleyball was great but Tokyo kind of cool kind of cool I like that that's really good um so with that I know if I'm not mistaken there's an event coming up as of recording uh, in a couple days, as of release, I think the day of or like a couple days, I don't really remember. Um, what is the event that's coming up? I think it's next week, if I'm not mistaken. Are you talking about the AVP? I think I am. In Chicago? I think I might be. It's the Chicago Championships. Oh, so, um, oh, so you mean, already won that. So that's, oh. <laughs> this is just in the bag, I guess, at this point. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> no, we, um, there's going to be a lot of great teams there. And we're really excited. If you're in the area, come by. Love it. Uh, so we'll we'll have the Chicago Championships. It's at Oak Beach, I think it's called. Mm. Um, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. I love playing in Chicago. I I had the opportunity to stay a few couple extra days after and sightsee, which was really fun. Um, don't get that opportunity this year though, because we will be leaving right after the event to Rome for the FIVB finals. Um, so if you're in Rome, hit us up. We'll be there. Check that. We'll Check all, that of, off. all of Check Kelly's, that off your bucket list. um, all of Kelly's social medias will be in the show notes so that people can find you there. How's that sound? Perfect. Perfect. Love it. Um, well, con- good luck. Congratulations. I think that's incredible. Rome should be a lot of fun. I'm sure Chicago will be a blast. And as again, as of release a couple days, um, which should be awesome. But going back to the Olympics a little bit, what is, so I know, from watching the Olympics for, I don't know, I've been alive 27 years. So however many times you can divide that by four. Um, what is like, how does the qualification process work? Cause I know we usually get two teams, if I'm not mistaken, uh, two Correct. males, Max, two female Max, teams. Two teams. Mm-hmm. Okay. How, how are those teams chosen and how close are you to being one of those two teams? We're very close. Awesome. So um, the qualification period started last October and uh, for the USA, uh, we 
take our points off um, FIVB events. So we'll have to, you know, just continue playing on tour the way we have been playing on tour. There's not like a one day trials and the top two will go type of thing. It's a, it's a one and a half to two year grind. So um, the cutoff day is next or June 15th, if I am not mistaken, of next year. And um, you'll take your best 12 events and the top two will go. And you obviously have to be, you know, top 16 in the world. Um, but it kind of, it trickles down because again, it's two top or two per country. So if there are, let's say three Brazilian teams in the top 16, it'll go down, it'll skip that team and go down to the 17th team. So it kind of trickles, but, um, we are in the third spot right now. I think we are three or 400 points behind the second spot. So we are very close. Rome will be, um, an, an amazing opportunity. It's a final big points, big money. So if we do well there, which that is the plan, um, we should pass that team in the second spot. So there's still time. Um, and there's going to be tournaments next year before the cutoff date. So yeah, we're just, we're just trying to take it kind of one tournament, kind of one game at a time. We know we're young and we're just trying to be patient because I think um, something that we both kind of struggle with being young is we get anxious and we want to just go, go, go. And I think um, older vets, um, they've been in this longer and they kind of get that this is, you know, a long race and just like the right times to be patient. So we're just trying to, um, you know, play, play like the vets and, and be patient in those kind of crazy moments and, win those those close sets because I think that's that's where we've been um that's kind of been our like kind of ice break moment is we're getting kind of anxious when we need to be calm uh, mm -hmm. and we've we talked about it a ton we're working on it and we're just I just I see us getting better every time we go out on the court which is really exciting it's all you can ask for just be one percent better than you were the day before and we'll be all 100 percent one of these days so that is fantastic so congratulations exactly. that is so cool you said three or four hundred points which sounds like a lot but I assume as you said you're very close so I assume each of these matches is worth a few hundred ish points if not more so I can send you the breakdown. I cool. Think. Yeah. Send me the breakdown again. That'll be in the show. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to put that in the show notes, but that's awesome. That's really <laughs> great to know. Again, Kelly, thank you so much. That is fantastic. Um, good luck with that. I think it's awesome. Um, so this is the part where we say goodbye to volleyball, Kelly. Um, we actually start talking to video game and D and D Kelly. Um, Love it. what are you playing now? What are you, what are you jamming on recently? Oh my gosh. So many, well, I've, Nothing crazy new right now, mm -hmm. just because we, we just got back from three months on the road on Monday. Oh my goodness. So uh, I, I didn't really buy anything new when I was on the road. I have, I bring my Switch. I was going to say go. Switch though, right? Yeah, that's fine. Yep, yep, yep. So uh, I play Odyssey on there. I play, oh, they just put Skyrim on there. So I was playing <gasps> Skyrim. No way. And, it's my favorite yeah, game of all time. Cool. Oh my gosh. It's so cool and uh breath of the wild the oh, new zelda naturally of course of course naturally. why'd you buy a switch if you weren't gonna buy zelda like come on i know right who would who would i be if i didn't buy a mario and a yeah, right. <laughs> Zelda game who am i um so yeah i've been playing mostly that now that i'm home i've um been kind of looking at i have a ps4 in my room which is one of my favorite um consoles to play on and i kind of want to start playing like an esports game but i don't know which one yet so mm. i've been doing i've been doing a little hunting my little brother loves video games too so we kind of wanted to find a game we could play together um so that's on the to-do list and then yeah that's i i have lots of plans to play but it's just been it's been busy 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 little, so once busy. the season is over um i'll probably jump back on the you yeah. know, pulling all-nighters when I shouldn't type nice. of things. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> Don't worry. Nobody's going to hear that. that. You're you. perfect. You. I will not tell a soul. Um, Don't tell my coach. Yeah. He no, like <laughs> never would I ever. Um, that's really interesting. Is there any opportunity for you to make money playing volleyball and also being just like a, a crazy good esporter as well? I think that would be oh, pretty gosh. awesome. I've, I've watched the people who are – pros play esports and i am like nowhere in their league like i i live and thrive and love 
playing video games, but I don't think I'm like, I don't think I'm anywhere close to, you know, the pros at it. Um, but I've never tried to play against them. So maybe, no, See? Then, please, no one challenge me. You're, you're going to win probably, you know, Give but us we, we would have a great time. That's all that matters first, as long as you have fun. Right. Um, but Hey, remember when you were like a 16 year old volleyball player and you're like, Oh, the Olympics, that's going to be really back. difficult. And now you're like, Hey, look, I, I expect to win the gold medal. Hey man. You know what? You're right. A lot of, tra- if a lot I of was, practice. If I was to give up volleyball. No, 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 time, no, 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 no. And give all the time that I've spent on volleyball, all the film that I've watched, all the hours in the gym, all the nutrition, all of those things, all the sports psych, and put all of that time into video games, I bet I could be a professional video game player. I believe but it. I, 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 can't, I can't do both at the same time. And I've, I've really committed to this beach volleyball thing, so mm. I don't think I'm going to back out now. Yeah, I'm going to ask you not to, just so that way people don't get angry at me. Um, yeah. Because yeah. that would be Because they'll blame you. They'll for sure blame they you. They kind of would have to. It was my idea, right? Um, but yeah, no, that's, that's – yeah, well, your career, unfortunately, one day will have to end. Um, and then that's when you can go and be a professional esporter or esport gamer, it. whatever the term is. I think that's whatever fantastic. The terminology. Yeah, um, sure. But yeah, um, Skyrim is like my favorite video game right next to Final Fantasy yeah. VII. So like that's that's what I, I – Final Fantasy Uncharted VII. Uncharted for me. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah, PS4. Okay, that makes sense. The whole sense. Uncharted mm-hmm. series mm-hmm. is – that and probably every Zelda game made. Yeah, a good friend of mine is uh, he is he jam. plays PS4 by himself mm-hmm. because nobody else does, um, and he loves his Uncharted. So, oh, wow. you got the joke! You got the joke! All right, let's go! Wow, just oh, shoot, too funny. shoot me in the hey man! I told here. you I volleyball Kelly's volleyball Kelly's gone, so I have no oh, yeah, repercussions yeah, yeah. at this point. Um, I, see, but no, I see. That is awesome. And then the other thing, um, huge D and D player. I think that's awesome. Can you tell us a little about your, you have a current character you're rocking with that you could tell us a little bit about? Her name is Dorn Hellfire. Ooh. I actually have a customized miniature in my room. Oh my goodness. And my, um, my two really, really good friends, Stephen Kelsey, who I play D and D with um, for my birthday last year, actually went to an artist, described my character and the artist made my character that and is it's insane. Unreal, and I really I need to put it I, I need to put it on something like really nice, like a piece of metal or something, and I want to put it up in my room. Um, but she is um, half human, half orc. Um, she's a barbarian, so I mm-hmm. just I go around and get mad out of nowhere and cut people's heads off. And love it. I live I live for it. Run around yeah. and beat stuff up. I love it. Who doesn't love yes. doing that? Come on. No, I just a full on rage and I'm, and I'm off and I have no concern for anything else in the world. Love it. I mean, with a last name like Hellfire. Yeah, that should make you happy because you really can't do that in real life. So it's nice to, again, do video games no, and you could do really that. Like let that out. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. exactly. We all have pretty... this. Keep going. No, I was just going to say she has a pretty, you know, pretty dark past, but yeah, she, I think that's where the rage comes from. Mm. Um, Her half um, uh, human father and um, her, she, she was born in a um, orc village and she was the only half um, breed there Mm. and they were kicked out because they were not like the rest, even though her mother was one of the um, elders of their, of their tribe, but they were, you know, uh, disrespected and you know cast out which was very sad and um Dorn and her father lost touch and I'm actually on a quest right now to find him but I'm kind of working with some people that I found that I actually kind of think are useful but I'm just using them to my own game type of thing you know um to find to find my father so that's love it that's what Dorn's that's what Dorn's yes mission is. yeah that's yeah awesome. yeah yeah your dad we talked about him so we're fine there but Dorn she's got to find him man she's got to find him that's awesome she's well it. she's on it Kelly, this was absolutely fantastic. Sincerely, is there is there anything else on the video game Dungeons and Dragons side that we need to talk about? Because um, I'll continue to go if you're ready to rock and roll. But I'm trying to think of anything else. Oh, uh, so there's a Switch game uh, that my friend told me about. It's called Baba Is You. It's a puzzle game, and it's incredible. Um, I've been trying to tell all my friends to buy it because. I just want to play it again. Um, It's a puzzle game. It's hysterical. It's really funny. It's really difficult to understand. But once you get it, you're like, oh, I get it. Um, So I'm not even going to waste my time. Just look up YouTube videos of it. It's hysterical. Um, Highly suggest it. A lot of time, especially if you're traveling and all you have is a switch. It's a nice little like, hey, let me pop in, do a couple levels, pop back out kind of thing. So check that out. Maybe you'll like it. I did. I'm trying to think. 
of the name. I just got a new game on my Switch, and now I'm blanking on the name. Um, have you ever played Ori in the Blind Forest? I have not. Oh my gosh, it's really similar to that, but that's not what it's called. Um, you should check out Ori in the Blind Forest. Deal. Maybe Fay. it's called. I'm trying to think. Have you ever played Journey on the PS4? Do you, do you play any PS4 games? Uh, no, I'm sorry. None of my oh, friends Journey have PS4s, so yeah. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Gosh, you know, I thought we were going to be fast friends, and now that I found this out about you, I just, I don't think. Come on, we had a blast. Worked. We had a blast this whole time. That's true. That's true. Awesome. Okay, I'll have to. I'll have to check out your game. All right. Last thing, I promise, Kelly. I know you're a huge Comic Con, Comic Con conqueror. Your own words, I'm guessing. Love oh, yes, the alliteration. Yes, yes. What? Uh, what is it about Comic Con that you just love so much? Tell me about it. It's just all of the geeky things that I love smashed into one building, and. <laughs> as well as just so much fan art that's incredible and just, you know, so many people with the same interests. People cosplay. I don't know if you know what cosplaying is. Yes, I do. Just people dressing up. Okay, perfect, perfect. No, and explain best- it. Explain it for people listening, though, just in case. I'm good. Explain oh, no, it for them. It's just, it's, it's like Halloween for adults. <laughs> Love it. How, that's pretty accurate, right? No, Love it's it. just, I mean, some people are absolutely there are professional cosplayers i am not one of them that can do absolutely amazing things and turn themselves into unreal characters and i i follow handful on instagram because they just do unreal things and i aspire to be like them but um my best friend and i last year finally after nine years of trying got tickets to san diego comic-con because it's really hard to get tickets um and we had the most amazing time but we uh on top of having a great time there, we had a great time before making our costumes. We cosplayed as, I don't know if you've ever seen Kim Possible. That was yeah. my age. Yeah, that was perfect. Okay, yep. love it. Did you see the movie at the end of the series? I Are you a real fan? I can't promise if I uh, saw the movie, but call me, beat me if you want to reach me. I love it. If you want to page me, it's okay. I love it. Perfect. Okay, so you know the theme, which is, I guess, okay. But at the very, very end of the series, they, they had a movie. And uh, Kim Possible had a kind of like a power suit. It was white and blue. And I made that for Comic-Con. And it's on my Instagram. You can check it out. It was, I think, the coolest thing I've ever created. And I, I've got the hair. And I did the makeup to look like her. And I had the most unreal time in so many people. Yes, I, mm-hmm. I did that costume right there. That is awesome. Me pick. Yeah. That is fantastic. And then my best friend went as Shigo, like with the green skin and everything. Mm-hmm. So we took some some rad photos together and just had an amazing time. And we wanted to pick kind of obscure characters so that we were the only ones in those costumes. And we only saw one other Shigo. And there were one or two other Kim Possibles, but in her normal outfit, which mm-hmm. is just a black crop top. I was going to say, that's pretty pan. easy, right? Yeah. That's so easy. So, and nobody else was in her power suit at the end. And, and a lot of people were like, oh my gosh, is that what I think it is? And, it's, and a lot of people are like, oh, what is that? I'm like, you don't know. I feel so awesome right now. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, it that's was, awesome. It was, it was a great time. And I've, I've gone to LA Comic Con the last five or six years, which I love LA Comic Con because it's a little smaller and I, and I get to like really see everything because there's not as many people. It's getting bigger, but not as many people as San Diego Comic Con, which in the middle of the day, it just turns into like sardines walking around because there are so many people. But it's it's still a really, really fantastic time. And yeah, I love it. That is fantastic. I've always wanted to go to San Diego Comic-Con only because of just the, the sheer size and the amount of people and all the crazy Me stuff that's too. going on. It just sounds like an absolute blast. So one of these days, when, again, if I make enough money, I'll, I'll make it out there. But until then... Perfect. You know, the whole expenses and food thing gets in the way. But um, uh, awesome. Food, well, rent. Yeah, well, rent. Well, hey. Yeah, rent sucks. Um, <laughs> Kelly, thank you so much. One more time. Kelly Clay's USA Volleyball 2020 Olympic hopeful. Loves her video games. Loves her volleyball. Loves her Comic-Con. Loves her video games again. Dungeons and Dragons. Dressing there up. There you go. Um, gold medals. All We're all for it. Things. All for it. And, you know, being one of the best athletes on planet Earth, that's kind of cool too. Kelly, sincerely, sincerely, thank you so much. Really, really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Our Athletes with Kelly Clays. As I said, just such a fun conversation getting to really speak to both sides of what she does and how she does it. So I think it was a lot of fun. I really hope you guys got something out of it. Learned a little bit about some video games, maybe a little D&D, but also a lot about volleyball, which is always uh, uh, an important part of these Olympic style podcasts. So thank you all so much. Make sure to follow Kelly on all of her socials. Everything is in the show notes as well as her website and any other information we might have spoken about. Um, make sure to follow us too. Everything is in the show notes as well at ourathletes.us on Instagram, at ourathletesusa on Twitter, www.ourathletes.us to check out the website and some of the stuff we're doing, as well as hitting me up on email and LinkedIn. Everything will be in there as well. So thank you all so much. Sincerely appreciate it. And I hope you make it a wonderful day.